In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We've just begun with a choir singing a traditional hymn. We shall end our service this morning with a more contemporary song of hope and blessing, amazingly compiled by musicians from nearly 50 churches around the country. Welcome to our service this morning, the fifth service in our Easter series, when we focus on confirmation and commitment. I'm delighted to be joined this morning by Daniel from the village of Wallington, by Caitlin from South Sea, and by Richard from Catherington and Clanfield. Sally, the Rector of Holy Trinity with St Columba, is with me as usual and shares in the leading of today's service. Wherever you are, across our diocese and beyond, we welcome you to this act of worship. We come together continuing to give thanks with joy for the rising of Jesus from the dead. We continue to pray for our nation and our world in a time of challenge and difficulty. And we call to mind those who are especially in need at this time. So wherever you are, in whatever spirit you come, we invite you to share with us, to worship with us, as we find hope and joy in Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Let us join together in our first prayer and say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve to the glory of God the Father. 
Amen. Amen. Today's reading is from Acts uh, 7, 55 to 60. Standing before the high priest and the council, Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed into the heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. But if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I pray that what I say and what you hear may be true to him, who is our friend, our brother, and our risen Lord. Amen. Stephen, as we just heard Daniel remind us as he read from Acts of the Apostles, was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what we pray for each person who comes to confirmation. In that wonderful service, which I'm privileged to lead as it's one of the very few services at which only a bishop can preside. In that great service, we pray to God, confirm, O Lord, your servant with your Holy Spirit. Unlike baptism or christening, which as we said last week, is sometimes when we're babies or very young, confirmation is something we remember because it takes place when we're old enough for re to renew for ourselves the promises of baptism and commit ourselves to them. If baptism is the sacrament of belonging, confirmation is the sacrament of commitment. At confirmation, we joyfully accept the privilege and the responsibility of being a Christian. So Easter, is a really wonderful time to be confirmed and to embrace faith in the risen Jesus. 
and as usual we had planned for the confirmation of more than 30 people at our cathedral's first Easter service. That of course couldn't take place because of the lockdown and I'm looking forward with those candidates and hopefully lots more to confirmation services when they can start again. So I'm particularly delighted that this morning for our service we're joined by Caitlin, by Daniel and by Richard. They are among the thousands of people I'm thrilled to have confirmed. It's always exciting, moving and for me humbling to hear people from teenagers to nonagenarians commit themselves to following Jesus Christ as we pray for each of them by name that they will be filled with the Holy Spirit just like Stephen the first martyr. Not many of us have the same sort of Christian life story as Stephen. He was the first person ever killed because of his Christian faith. His story is a reminder for us even in this Easter season of hope and joy, that sometimes faith costs. The cost is rarely of life, like Stephen's, but each of us gives time, energy, money, thought and prayer to being compassionate, loving, just and fair in what we say to others and what we do for them and with them. God gives us the Holy Spirit to respond to that calling to follow Jesus. If you've been to a confirmation service, you may remember what happens. It's a great celebration, often for a large congregation, as at our cathedral on four or five Saturday evenings each year, and also around the deaneries and parishes of the diocese two principal things happen. The people coming for confirmation do what we did in this service last week and renew their baptism promises. They confirm them, they repeat them, just like we repeat or confirm important arrangements. As we sometimes say to each other, let me just confirm or repeat that the meeting or the party will be on this or that day or at whatever time. Daniel, Caitlin, Richard or whoever it is boldly confirms at confirmation that they are friends and followers of Jesus. That's the first confirmation in a confirmation service. But it's the second confirmation in the service that gives it, gives it its name and its importance. This confirmation isn't about us, but about God. We pray that God confirms the person with the Holy Spirit. In order to be the follower of Jesus we want to be, we need help. Our commitment needs strengthening, confirming. The Holy Spirit strengthens our resolve and our commitment and enables us to do more than we could ever imagine, even to face the challenges that Stephen encountered. So the story of Stephen we heard this morning isn't an unusual gloomy Bible reading for the Easter season, as it might at first seem, but a spectacularly encouraging and strengthening story for us to hear. Whatever we face, even if it's something as tough as Stephen's experience, we have the assurance of the Holy Spirit's presence to support us and sustain us. This is a good news story in every way. And that's why the words of Jesus in the gospel give us such hope and reassurance. If you ask, Anything in my name, says Jesus, I will do it. Today, you may face a challenge or in the week ahead. Some people face another week of loneliness 
with perhaps only occasional sight and sound of other people, and then only at a distance or down the phone line. Some will be continuing in their costly and vital work in health centres, care homes and hospitals, and also in the vital services that enable life to be sustained for the rest of us. I know Caitlin is mentioning a number of them in our prayer shortly. Some of us are worried for the health or the life of others or ourselves. Into your situation today and this week, pray for the strengthening of the Holy Spirit to meet whatever comes. The Holy Spirit confirms and strengthens us to be followers of the risen Jesus. My prayer for you and for me is this confirmation prayer. You may like to repeat it after me. Strengthen me, O Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Strengthen me, O Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. The response to each prayer will be, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that during this difficult time that you give people hope. Hope to take each day as it comes and know that you will bear all of their anxieties for them. During this worrisome time, I pray that you give them a sense of peace so that despite the negativity covering the world at the moment, they are able to remain positive and keep their strength and trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that you give strength to all of the key workers across the world. Doctors, nurses and care workers who continue to put themselves on the front line against the virus, but also shop workers and delivery drivers who also work tirelessly despite the effort and the difficult circumstances that they face. I hope that you continue to provide them with the strength that they need every day to go out and face this virus in the affected world head on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that you watch over all of the clergy and their families. The church has been hugely affected by the pandemic and I pray that you continue to give them comfort in knowing you and your word. I pray that they are kept well and safe with their families, feeling comforted knowing that you are with them. I pray that they continue to have courage in spreading your word and are not frightened by the different situation that we find ourselves in today, but instead rejoice that the church is able to spread the message of God in new ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that you send your love into people's lives who are feeling lonely as a result of the social distancing and self-isolation measures. Bring your loving voice into their lives so that they know that they are not alone. I pray that they are filled with a sense of fulfillment knowing that you are always with them. If they are struggling with a mental health issue, Lord, I pray that you give them the support and care that they need to face their illness head on and know that there is nothing that you cannot do. Dear God, remind them of the fact that you are with them throughout all of their struggle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Dear Lord, I pray that you help the victims of the virus who are currently fighting for their lives in care homes, hospitals and homes across the world. Give them comfort to know that you are with them throughout this entire journey and will be supporting them and their loved ones at this troublesome time. I pray that you give them a sense of peace amongst all of the storm in knowing that you are here guiding them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that you continue to support those whose lives have been completely devastated by this event. Whether it be by losing a loved one, mental health problems, domestic violence, or having serious financial issues. I hope that they are filled with strength despite the many problems and losses that they face and that they know that you are there fighting their battles alongside them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that you watch over anyone who is feeling lost as a result of the virus and the repercussions that has brought upon the world. With the drastic changes, many find themselves without purpose and meaning. Lord, I pray that you remind them of their worth, the truth that they are fearfully and wonderfully made by you for a reason. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that the world continues to remember the sacrifices that many people gave during previous wars. Despite the disruption of the pandemic, I pray that many people's courageous and selfless acts are not forgotten. I pray that veterans all across the world are properly cared for and that they know that we appreciate the sacrifices that they made. I hope that for the rest of the years to come, VE Day is celebrated to commemorate the bravery that the soldiers possessed and the many who gave their lives on all sides during the difficult time of World War II. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo 
the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin and death, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave himself up for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high and we long for his coming in glory as we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption. Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth Heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray together. Faithful God, in baptism you have adopted us as your children, made us members of the body of Christ, and chosen us as inheritors of your kingdom. We thank you that in this Eucharist you renew your promises within us. Empower us by your spirit to witness and to serve and send us out as disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. from heaven this isn't second guessing we know that we are protected may the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message grace and favors in your nature in your essence Children, their children, their children, 